It's week four of the six-week Ambient Guitar EP Challenge. How you doing? That's right, we're more than halfway through the challenge. I hope you all are having as much fun as I am composing and recording a new ambient guitar track each and every week. Well, this week we should be working on track number three. So I've seen in the comments a couple of you, a few of you are kind of running behind because of equipment or schedule or whatever. No worries. Just keep moving ahead at your own pace. Remember, the goal is to end up with an ambient guitar EP however long it takes, but ideally in six weeks. All right, this video, I'm gonna walk through my third track. And then after that, I'd like to discuss some options for distributing your ambient guitar EP. All right, first of all, I'll include a link somewhere around here to the actual track that I've recorded and posted on YouTube. Uh, so go listen to that after this video. Anyhow, it's a very simple piece, and I've based it on an old Christian hymn called In Christ There Is No East or West. And I didn't, I didn't even take the whole melody. I just took some notes out of the melody to create kind of a looping frippertronics type of piece. And here's what I've got going on with the piece. Basically, here's my dry guitar sound. Okay, and you may notice I've got two capos on the guitar. I've got it capoed on the first fret, which makes my baritone pretty much a C standard tuning. And then I've got a split capo on the third fret, which gives me kind of a fake or faux dadgad style tuning. So if you're thinking like D on a standard guitar, this would be kind of like playing the dadgad tuning on a standard guitar. Anyhow, I've got the ever-present Wampler Ego, and I've got the Strymon Riverside set up to a very low gain, and here's what that sounds like. Okay, just, you know, it's pretty much what I've been using all along. Next up, I've got my Ebo, and I'm using that for the Frippertronics kind of looping thing, and pretty much you'll hear me just playing single notes And they're going to be very slow, okay? And you heard a volume pedal in there. That's the Morley Little Alligator. Next up is the Strymon El Capistan, and I've got a sound-on-sound -sound loop going. Here's what that sounds like with the Ebo. Great. Now, in the actual track, I've got the repeats turned up uh, to keep things going, but I've got it turned down so I don't have to listen to it too long <laughs> while I'm talking here. Anyhow, after that, I'm going to skip over the flashback triple delay for a moment. I've got the Strymon timeline set up to a pattern delay, and here's what it sounds like without the El Capistan. <laughs> Okay, so I've, I've been kind of using the pattern delay a lot for this EP. I don't know if I'll use it for the other two tracks, but it's been working well for me thus far. And then finally, I've got the Big Sky set up with a hall reverb. Here's what that sounds like. Right, so it sounds great. Okay, so if you combine it all together, with the exception of the flashback triple delay, here's what you get. Okay, again, on the real piece, I've got the repeats turned up on the El Capistan. Finally, let's talk about the flashback triple delay. I've got all three delays set up. The first delay is a tape style delay. Second delay is reverse. And the third delay, delay number three, is the 2290, which is a clean digital sounding delay. And they're running in series, which means that delay one goes into two, which goes into three. 
Here's what delay one sounds like by itself. So it's a pretty long delay, and you may have just noticed I disengaged the delay and it kept, it's still repeating. So what that means is I've got the unit set to buffered bypass, so I can keep those repeats going whether the delay is on or off. Delay number two, which is the reverse, sounds like this. Okay, and then delay number three sounds like this. And that's got a really long repeat on it, so you'll hear that that just kind of keeps on going. Now, in the piece, I'm not using it very much at all. I'm only using it when I hit the low C uh, with the Ebo, right? So I'm gonna play this low C. Okay, and that's gonna be looping through the El Capistan. But after I finish playing the low C and back off the volume pedal, I'm gonna bring in those delays to create an extra drone of that low C. So let me see, haha, <laughs> if I can do that, I'll turn on the El Capistan and get that going and then hit the delays. Check this out. That's pretty cool, isn't it? And when you combine it, when you combine it with the timeline delay, you get a really nice drone that you can then play over for a little bit. And it, it just kind of keeps on going and going and going, and it allows me to create many different layers. And that's a big reason why I didn't try to play the entire melody of that old hymn. It, it would have been too much. So I'm just playing individual notes uh, to perform the piece. All right, that's the breakdown of my track. Let's switch gears and talk about distribution. I've had some questions about that, so, Here's a few options to think about. One is SoundCloud. So there's some folks I know from the comments who are planning on uploading their EP to SoundCloud, and that's cool if you're into SoundCloud. I'm not a big fan of that uh, simply because of the discoverability issue with SoundCloud. I don't think it's very discoverable. And also, there's no way to directly make money off of SoundCloud. Now, I, I know it's not all about the money, but it's nice to have that option there if you can. So that brings me to option number two, and that is Bandcamp. I am a big fan of Bandcamp. I have been using it since, gosh, I don't know, 2012, 2011, whenever I uploaded my first album. And I think it's great. There's decent discoverability. It's not amazing, but it's decent discoverability. And you can upload your album and make it available for download and allow people to pay for it. So you, if, you know, if you've been around Bandcamp, you know that you can set the price to allow people to pay whatever they wish, or you can have a specific price that you want to sell your music for. If you've never done uh, an EP before, this is your first upload, my suggestion would be to set your EP to name your price and start it at zero. So people can download it for free if they wish. What you'll find is that some folks will pay you money for it, even though it's available for free. And that's really cool. That was really encouraging to me when I got started. So SoundCloud's a great option. Number three is YouTube. Uh, we're here on YouTube, right? Perhaps you have not started uploading videos to YouTube. And that's okay. Now may be the time to think about doing that. 
And for this project, my suggestion, if you're not already uploading videos to YouTube, is to make a very simple video where you've got your audio and just slap a static picture up there or a little video clip. Make sure it's public domain now. Don't steal anybody's um, you know, content. That's not good. YouTube will not like that. But uh, just make it a really simple video. You don't have to perform in it like I do. And go ahead and upload it. The, th the great thing about YouTube is it's extremely discoverable. It's the world's second largest search engine owned by the world's largest search engine. The fourth option to think about is to distribute your album to all the major streaming platforms like Spotify, Apple Music, etc., Google Play, etc., etc. And the way that typically is done is to use a content aggregator. Okay, and that's, that's an organization that has relationships with all of the streaming platforms and can receive your tracks and then distribute them and all of those platforms do pay royalties, so that would also come through your content aggregator. And of course, they take a cut or whatever the arrangement is, and you get the rest. So the aggregator I use is CD Baby. I've been using them since 2008 when I uh, was selling CDs, and they've been really good. They get albums out on time. It's, it's great uh, in terms of the actual service they provide. All right, so get going on track number three of your six-week Ambient Guitar EP Challenge. And if you haven't already done so, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I will see all of you on the next video.